Bear Hardcore Radio, exploring the world's best hardcore punk and all the various subgenres. For the next two hours we will enter a world apart from the rest. The time is now. What's up with that? Let's start jamming. dead air 20 more to go and then we can get to them triple fucking digits i'm gonna try to pull through and do this for y'all who am i kidding i'm doing it for me some of y'all don't care or some of y'all maybe just start listening and if you just start listening thank you so much you're listening to dead air two hours of hardcore radio i have been doing it for quite some time uh and it's been a show for a long time, but uh, I, you know what? Read the bio, deadairhardcoreradio.com. But uh, if you're a new listener, thank you so much for uh, checking us out. And we're going to talk about hardcore. Um, this week, we have Dan Crayley, who also is on a, uh, a hardcore podcast of sorts. Self-admitted that it wasn't an, an intentional hardcore podcast, but that's what it became because um, he was a hardcore kid and a hard and uh, with uh, hardcore friends, and that's kind of what happens. Uh, me, I just I wanted to do hardcore radio because I listened to this show uh, when I was younger, and that's what I wanted when I when I heard this. This is what I wanted to do as a hobby for fun and, you know, semi-seriously as well. So it's really cool to just uh, talk to other people who are doing the same thing. And much like myself, Dan does his show kind of solo. Guests are accompanied, but there's no crew. I mean, once upon a time I've had a crew, but it's been over two years now. It's been almost... It's been two and a half years since I've had a full like crew helping me do stuff. And sometimes it was more of like an, a crew of interns where I was, um, I loved my interns, but I did a lot, um, 
more of like pointing and shooting and still had to kind of do the work for them and just say, hey, say this, say this record is tight. And that happens sometimes. And sometimes there were questionable uh, music choices. That's why some of the, uh, those episodes are no not archived. So not that I haven't made questionable music choices in the past, but there's been, I think, man, me and Chris will have to go on some of the questionable things that ended up getting played on the live um, dead air. And we can get into that a whole nother time. But now, for now, we're going to talk to Dan Creeley of Getting Out Podcast. Also did a lot of editing on Stereo Killer. Um, also fronted his own band out of Baltimore. We'll talk more about that later. We're going to talk a lot about it. So we're going to uh, talk about the music before we get into it. Um, I want to think, is there anything else I want to say before we... Uh, get started okay dead air uh important stuff to know if you're a you know first time listener or haven't listened too much uh follow follow us on facebook facebook facebook.com slash dead air hardcore radio also twitter and instagram both at at dead air nwcz also you can send us emails for submissions and all that good stuff dead air nwcz at gmail.com we're also on live streaming on a ton um, of different radio platforms. So go to deadairhardcoreradio.com for a lot of info that you can uh, find out everywhere that we stream and when we stream and support those stations that we play on because there's a lot of awesome music also on those, on all the stations that we play live on. And uh, a good portion of them also have uh, have apps that you can download. So... There's no excuse not to listen to all the awesome content on those stations as well as um, listen to Dead Air. There's so many ways to listen. Um, If you've been listening recently, we recently got on Anchor FM and Spotify. More to come. It looks like that whole uh, getting, you know, the distribution. I did something wrong. I Either they fucked up or I fucked up. Something's wrong. So right now we're on Anchor and Spotify. More to come. I'm going to have to make some calls. You know, crush some skulls. I don't fucking know. Um, and we will uh, we'll see what happens. But please, if you're a Spotify listener, please follow us on Spotify. Um, give us listens. Go to our... Please help uh, just grow this uh, show, this podcast. There's also a group dead air hardcore radio. Um, start discussions. Tell talk about talk about hardcore and uh, anything you feel like you want to talk about. I'm gonna try more to get involved on that. There's a few platforms that sometimes I fall flat on, and some weeks are harder than others. Um, just because this time of year is, I'm uh, I'm just it's just now getting starting to get into the busy season for working, and I'm trying to uh hopefully have a kind of a set ish schedule to where i can know how uh, each week's gonna play out because i honestly do not know so that's enough um of you know shop talk let's talk hardcore punk and everything in between we started off with a track from drug church Something I don't really think I have played much on the show at all. I think maybe the last time I played it was like a year and a half plus. Maybe almost two years. Uh, I know they they were on a tour with Gouge Away when I did did an interview with um, one of the members of the band. You can check that out on uh, deadairhardcoreradio.com. You'll see these plugs. Repetition, right? We're still a pretty small uh, operation here. When I see when I see uh, the numbers I'm working with, so I just want to get repetition. So so we can have people who, if you like what you hear, you keep coming back. That's what uh, that's just what I'm I'm trying to be uh, responsible with this. 
among other things. So drug church, like I said, I haven't played too much of drug church, even though I am a big, uh, I'm, I'm about, um, Pat's, uh, podcast and radio voice. Probably one of my favorite, um, like voices and inflections in most of, uh, and in the far, as far as punk and hardcore podcasting and radio is concerned, big fan. Uh, didn't listen to too much Drug Church um, prior, but this might be um, my favorite song that I've heard from Drug Church thus far. Bliss Out on Pure Noise Records, um, a single that uh, hopefully will lead to some more uh, stuff going on. They currently. They were or are still on tour with uh, Thrice. From what I heard, it was a, been a sold out tour. So, so nothing but good things coming from coming uh, from Drug Church and coming to Drug Church. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I like. I'm honestly gonna have to check more Drug Church out. I uh, admittedly, I've heard songs here and there. I've even selected some for uh radio play that i've liked but haven't but there's been a time i think i talked about the previous episode that i was like there was a there was a good time in between right before i uh started here at the tacoma station that i was getting kind of burnt out listening to music sometimes i i went back on an old a USB and some some of the stuff I don't even remember what it fucking sounds like and I was like I remember the fucking name it's it it's it's rough out there folks so drug church bliss out pure noise if you're a drug church fan you haven't heard it check it out cuz you'll fucking love it cuz I'm not um a hundred percent sold it's not that I don't like them I haven't given it too much of a chance and i really liked what i heard with this uh with this single it's different from what i did it's if you just heard it it's you can tell it's definitely different from uh the regular format of um of punk that we that we play here but it's uh i'm, I'm trying to break the mold of what i have been uh been stuck in so if it, if the if their upcoming records anything like this, I'm gonna be all over it. The production, vocals, everything about it, it's just fucking catchy as shit. So we're gonna get to our uh, interview with Mr. Dan in just a little bit. So, but we're gonna before we get there, let's uh, play some music from. Uh, Band called Pressure Cracks. If you haven't listened to them, um, it's probably because there's the singer has been in two other bands, and this one has kind of been overshadowed. Um, I forgot I I've heard of this band before. I forgot it even it even existed. It is Jason who was in uh, Let Live, currently in a band called The Fever Three Three Three, The Fever Three Three Three, um. They're, uh, I can't say much on Fever 333 because I haven't, like, they came out in the last couple of years and then a lot of stuff, uh, uh, they kind of went on to, I believe, take on kind of a mainstream form. And I'm just completely uninformed on that. I was always, uh, a fan of what Let Live did just because Stage Presence was amazing. I loved the glass jaw approach of the music though some hardcore fans might not be about it i definitely am it's uh in that in that vein of i feel like weird punks wouldn't call this weird but i guess in in uh progressive music like weirdo weirdo progressive uh rock i'm i'm all about so but pressure cracks is more of is more on the uh line of what of what we play here but definitely more on the mid 2000s kind of every time i die t- um tip of where things kind of uh 
started to smooth out in sound for every time I die. Uh, no, no hate there. Still, there's still aggression. There's still moshiness, and that was kind of the type of music that uh, put me on to a lot of uh, hardcore inspired music. Like every time I die helped, uh, you know, get me into actual um, hardcore music. And uh, a band, I think on on here, one of the people said, um, I'm just looking at the con- YouTube comments, um, saying that uh, every time I die in this band should do a tour. That'd be cool. That make it makes complete sense. Um, and somebody said um, the words like chaotic hardcore, which I would not. I can see where there's an influence there, and I and. I am one to say I I have listened to quote unquote some chaotic hardcore bands and I hate the label chaotic hardcore a hundred percent. I would say this is a lot more like I like I said with every time I die contained a little smoothed out. I see where the influence is and I see where it lies, but not I would not personally call it uh, chaotic hardcore. But who the fuck am I? I'm just some motherfucker with a mic. I'm no, I'm no fucking expert. And most of y'all just listen to music, listen to my music and tolerate my voice and just, uh, move on to the goddamn interviews. Cause honestly, that's, that's what's fucking up. That's what, that's what the fuck is up. All right. That's enough of that. We're going to play, um, the latest song from Pressure Cracks. It came out um, at the beginning of December. Actually, it came out three. The single. So let's 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 see. So the single was released in December. The uh, EP came out um, a few weeks ago. So check it out if you like Pressure Cracks. I don't know how much this band will be playing. It seems like definitely a side effort from the Fever 333. Ah, man, I don't like saying that whatsoever. That's hard. That's It doesn't roll off the tongue, and I'm not a big fan of saying the Fever 333. I know they're on regular radio, so I wonder how other DJs care about that. Anyway, let's move to that track. Ready for you. Pressure cracks, and then we'll be back in a little bit. You'll listen to Dead Air, Tours of Hardcore Radio. Yeah, yeah. 
Interested in having your band played or interviewed on the show? Hit us up on our Facebook at facebook.com slash deadairhardcoreradio. <laughs> There's a lot that I uh, was going to say, but I can't fucking remember, dude. Like, I feel like there's so many things. I, now I'm thinking about all the thoughts that have left my mind that are possibly important, but I'm never going to know because <laughs> I don't remember. It just that's just not going to it's not happening for me straight up. I don't know if the thing I was going to say is more important than the thing I'm saying now, but we will never fucking know. You know, those big thoughts, man. Big thoughts. And I mean, like, the thinking kind. Anyway. So. Oh, yeah. You know what fucking emptied my mind? I had things I was going to say. And then I saw there was going to be a mo- another motherfucking Minion movie. Um, How do you feel about that? Big excited or big mad? Maybe I'll put a poll on Twitter or something to see how people fucking feel about a new Minions movie. Um, I know the last time Minions, like, all my grown-ass adult friends were all about it, all about fucking, and bought into fucking Minions culture and are about it, but are we about Minions culture in 2020? And is our hardcore kids into Minions culture in 2020? I want to know. I'm going on a search this week to find out. So after uh, Pressure Cracks, we played new music from Gadget XXX from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm going to tell you straight up, I was not expecting that. So when I think of uh, G bands, I think of I always like one word G bands make always automatically thought of think of gag so i honestly thought it was going to be faster punkier everything like there is definitely some punk it's a straight edge band but like when they start off in to be fair there's some more tracks in here that i have to listen to but when you start off with some melodic and some metalcore shit that's gonna that threw me off. That is not what I expected. I expected at least maybe something more youth crewy, 
with the word gadget xxx i didn't expect this there's a little bit of everything like there is there's some there are some punk in the vocals in the faster parts but there's also some metalcore some uh some melodic transitions that threw me for a fucking loop my dude that's uh yeah but needless to say it was a good surprise not it wasn't uh wasn't bad by any means and like i said i'll go back to this uh, statement i need to listen to more um, I only have so much time to listen to tracks and I don't give myself that much enough time to be fair. So we're going to get to Mr. Dan in a minute and get to that feature interview. But one more song. So we had this, uh, we had the singer from this band on, I'm going to think it's about May. It's somewhere between I'm if I if my memory serves me and it r- rarely does I'm going to say it was roughly is between April and May that uh re- the singer of Reign of Salvation came on kind of to talk about the premiere of the band cuz it was like I love uh this style of heavy music um as I'm uh, getting older or just my tastes are changing a little bit or I'm just like as far as like heavier beat down music I'm I am quicker to either shelf a band or just disregard because I it's I've heard a lot I've heard you if you listen to some of the earlier episodes there were some sites where I was literally taking cues from beat down left and right. And it wasn't, it was just cause there was a time where that was like, that was, that was it. That was, that was a lot of the new music that I was um, getting or getting sent to me. So it got kind of oversaturated. And if you listened, then, you know, but reign of salvation definitely has a sound that, is somewhat timeless with me where it takes elements of all my like kind of my favorite um reincarnation of some some uh late 90s um heavy hardcore such as trial and rebrands it and uh, this definitely is in a found a foundation lane not exactly vocally but there's some parts that are almost identical and not in a, a, some people might say it is a rip where I would say it sounds more of a continuation. And that is just in my mind of the, the foundation style of straight edge East Coast mosh. Um, and I'm all about it. Could be a Reign of Salvation could be a, a pretty big band in uh, this new decade. So uh, watch out for that. So we're going to play a new single um, that just came out on uh, February 4th. Uh, So this month, just like a day or maybe a few before you hear this. So uh, check it out. It's on Bandcamp right now. Straight Edge. um, That uh, Straight Edge band that reigns from New York. Delaware and Connecticut that a uh, three-way connection and uh, who knows what this means could be a standalone single also could be a uh, could be something for a future release split or something only time will tell and we're gonna play this and then we'll uh, talk to Mr. Dan you listen to Dead Air 2 Hours of Hardcore Radio
What's up, motherfucker? This is Bear Bear Mashup telling you to check out the brand new Bear Bear website now. Go to BearBearHeartRadio.com for all podcasted shows as well as news reviews and content you can't get anywhere else. Go now or feel the wrath of my cold, hard robotic legs been kicking you straight in the face. Hello. Mr. Dan Crowley. What's up? What's happening, man? How you doing? Good, good. Am I... So are we, is it Crowley or Crawley? Because there's no, uh, there's uh, no W. It's neither. You failed. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Crowley. It's Crowley. At least you sound exactly how you do from your podcast. I, I never know. I haven't, I don't think I've ever done an actual interview with someone from, like, that does, like, another show. So I'm like, yeah. I wonder if they sound exactly how how they sound when I when I turn on their podcast? Well, I'm, I, I hope so because I'm 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 using all the same stuff, so so I should. You know, I'm sitting at the same spot. Um, I'm at the same time of night. It's everything's right, so it, be, it better be right. I mean, it sounds like I'm 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 on getting it out podcast right now. I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm living it. <laughs> well, well, you, we we kind of both are. That's that's. That's what we're doing tonight. But I, well, we're not. We're doing Dead Air. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome to Dead Air. Uh, D- Dan Crayley. Cr- oh, man, I'm messing, am I still messing it up? No, you got it that time. Okay, Dan Cr- Okay, I got I to gotta actually, like, spell it out correctly because we, we got the E there. So, Crayley. Yeah. All right. That's, yeah. that's correct. All right. So, Getting It Out podcast. You are also uh, editor on another uh, website. Was it Stereo Killer? I did. Yeah, for a while. I don't know what's going on with Stereo Killer right now. So, that Stereo Killer. If anybody has been tried to go there recently, it's it's been like a splash page that says it's coming back on this date. But um, I've been I've been doing a lot of stuff for Stereo Killer for a lot of years. So uh, rather than continue to have be like. A, have this thing that I don't know what's happening with. I'm actually starting my own thing, which is is going to be getting it out.net. It's already being built, you know. There's already content happening. The website's already underway. So, so yeah, Stereo Killer for a long time, and I'll still be involved there. But definitely, getting it out podcast is becoming like a, a bigger thing, where it's becoming getting it out.net, and then it's going to be you know things built off of that. Uh, well, I, I guess from like for now that's what people know you from so that that makes a hundred percent sense that makes sense because uh weird thing stereo killer was actually um my gateway uh back in the day yeah i had a i made i made a profile and all that stuff for the i believe it was the pa hardcore uh little sub uh like group that you guys had in there and i had people uh make fun of me because I because my favorite band was Bad Religion at the time. So I was just like all the hardcore kids were giving me a lot of shit. Um because I would just like list a bunch of bands and they all they a lot of the times they would just be like it was I think I was like I w I was six I was sixteen. I was uh in between so my parents were like in between like a move so I did homeschool for for uh, like a year in high school. So I was like I was I did all my schooling from their like work. So I would, so I would, when I had free time, I would just get on all these, you know, websites, message message boards, websites, and try to absorb all this different music. And yeah, I, my main thing I remember is just like, uh, people just be like, wow, that's a great list. Idiot. (laughs) <laughs> it was a it was a really cruel website it, it really was i mean like like hindsight now is just like man that was that was it was over the top it was totally ridiculous but it, i mean really it was a bunch of fucking kids you know it was just like they were just a little bit older than you like because I, I don't know how old are you now trevor i am i recently turned 30 okay so so think of it this way so how much of an idiot do you think you were at 26 um like now, at thirty to look to look at twenty six, do you think you were a moron then, or at least you know more of a moron than you are now? I would say, I say even I'm a, I'm a moron. I'm more of a moron <laughs> as I was two weeks ago. 
I, 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 I would say, I, I would say, just looking back on our maybe last, just the night prior to today, I, I feel like, man, I feel like I'm just a little bit smarter. Yeah, no, it's and that's <laughs> the way it works, right? So, so when you were 16, and those, you know, you were rightfully so an idiot, right? Because we all are. We're supposed to be. But then you have these people from the perspective of a 16 year old, these older people at 26 who like, you know, have a opinion that somehow matters, but they were fucking idiots too. So everybody was just saying stupid idiot stuff. If I, uh, a lot of, uh, try to I can't even say the words that used to be said on there anymore. It was a lot of, it was awful, you know, <laughs> but, but, but having said all that, it was a good place to find music for a lot of years. Yeah. It's weird. Cause like, Everybody would have something like they would have like laundry lists of things negative to say. But if it was about something that they liked, it would just be like, this is cool. Yeah, yeah <laughs> they had nothing. Yeah, they had exactly. they had no like like further input to something that they actually liked. They just like they literally just wanted to complain. <laughs> well, that's kind of like a parallel to now, right? Like as a real adult, it's, you know, nobody talks about the shit that they like. They just tell you all the shit that sucks. Oh, true. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it was, it was in preparation to being an adult, I guess. No. And, you know, I guess, I guess that message board wasn't much like different than any other like message boards like now, like the anything like now it's, now it's Facebook groups. Like yeah, there's hardcore Facebook groups and there's one for like another podcast that we won't like talk about. That's basically like, it's literally just like that. It's just like talking over like, ne like super niche stuff and, um, trashing on anything, anything that you don't like and going super hard. It's just those kids from the old message boards, but now they're, but now they're like my age older and doing the exact same thing. Yeah, it's very weird, and, and but I think the the uh, unfortunate thing, well, one of the many unfortunate things about uh, you know, like social media, was it did kill, um, like message board websites. But but like a, a message board website, like like Stereo Killer was a little unique, or PA Hardcore, whichever name you you went to, it went to the same website. Um, was that there there was a way to discover music on that page, or on that website outside of that fan page? Like there were there were. There was shit you could listen to right there. You know, you didn't have to travel outside. You didn't have to click a link. It was all it was available to you. And and I don't think I don't know that many of those websites exist anymore where you could communicate and discover new stuff. All I know is I never want I I feel bad for anybody now who's still doing it in in thinking back to trashing people on a message board as their if that's your glory days. I, f I personally feel really, <laughs> really bad for you. <laughs> I think that's a lot of people, though. I think I I think that's where that that was. I mean, I, I was never one for like the Bridge Nine mess board. That was oh yeah, I mean, I, oh I, man, I, the B Nine was a mess. <laughs> I visited, you know what I mean, but I was never I was never in deep there. Um, I would go to promote things or try to sell stuff on eBay, but even then, I didn't get the rules. So and and, and I just didn't get the rules. I didn't understand the hierarchy there. It didn't care. It was never – like I don't know. I was just out of touch. But I know that there are people that had you know these reputations on as, as a message board poster, which is fucking hilarious. You know? <laughs> like, and I, I don't know. It never mattered to me. And it's funny that it did matter at one point. And, and now, yeah, what does that mean? What, do, do they it's, keep that metal on a shelf? Uh, well, I know – and I know some friends who are still like exactly – keep that same pace they're doing the same thing it's just on on facebook and on so so like it, it, for those people like that probably still means a whole lot because they're that's probably going to be them in to the grave they will be a hardcore shit poster from from cradle till <laughs> that's gonna be on there they're gonna have probably their best like shit posting like engraved on their tombstone 
Hey, that's, I mean, we all live for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think is funny is when, like, I go on, to, oh, I'm, I'm a part of a lot of these groups on, on Facebook, um, but it's strictly the only reason I do it. And yes, it's full transparency, and they can know this, and this is what I'm getting to, is that I only am a, am a member of these groups. So on Friday, when I put out my weekly episode <laughs> of the podcast, I can post it in there. Exactly. <laughs> and, and every time, not every time, once every two weeks or so, I get some message from some moderator of a group that tells me I can't do that and I need to take it down. And I always respond with something similar of like, no, you can just delete me. Like, <laughs> it's fine. Like, and I, and I mean that. Like, it's totally okay. I'm not going to stop. So you can just delete me or like, kiss my, like, or kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, like it's, it doesn't even like, usually I'll, I'll, I'll fuck with them a little bit, you know, and play along, but, but it's, this is so unimportant. Like just, if you just delete me, like, go ahead. You, you have the power. Just take it. I don't, I'm not going to be upset if you take me out of your metal group. And I, you know, I didn't share a brutal technical death metal band. I uh, instead posted a podcast. I don't give a shit. Take me out. You know, but some people, that's their that's their world, and that's where they're in power, and it's important to them, and it's very strange. And for me, don't don't yeah, I have a message board. Don't post brutal brutal technical death metal. That's insufferable <laughs> to me. If it's not if it's not fucking uh, caveman mosh music, I'm literally just going to just get over it and start post. I won't delete it, but I'll start. You'll notice when I try to bury a post. Yeah, yeah. And that's there that and I guess uh yeah if you if you see your post get buried because you because you posted your brutal technical death metal band uh that's that's why right <laughs> and yeah and and I get that that's better like but don't could don't confront me like you're gonna take like you're gonna take something away from me like uh, I'm not six you know like it's the internet do whatever you want but yeah so that's to me that the way you deal with it that's a much better way i forget there's there's a few things in here like you get it with any message board just somebody promoting their random stuff that has nothing that has nothing to do oh, somebody literally um posted their in my group uh a baby metal cover i haven't listened to yeah. it yet <laughs> but the it looks like Oh yeah, so they have. I'm 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 looking at it right now. It's someone with, with. Oh okay. Oh okay. I'm 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 watching this in real time. I'm like, <laughs> you're 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 putting you're putting some proficiency in here. You're this person did all their own instruments, and well, that's not bad, and though. they record in the. But like, I could care less about about baby metal, and that's not. And it's just. It's also just not going to go over with my with my uh, listeners or my group very well. So, right, right. you know, good luck. I'm um, I'm very <laughs> impressed. I wish I could. I wish I w- wish I had the patience to do what you're doing. He has. A, it looks like he has an amazing studio. Um, I'm actually probably giving him a great plug right now. Yeah, yeah, he's, no, it makes me want to check it out. He's he he's doing like anyone, even if it's like not something I like, like even technical brutal death metal if you're doing it all by yourself you're you're 10 times more talented than me and you don't need to worry about uh my acceptance or my opinion because yeah you you'll probably you'll probably surpass me in every way of uh, <laughs> talent in music well you know like i i saw i was just just before actually like an hour ago i was uh i was doing an interview with um with a guy who whose music I, I don't particularly care for, um, but but okay. So it's are you familiar with Ghost? Not the band, the electron, the synth wave guy. No, no, I know, I know. Obviously, the big, the 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 huge rock band Ghost, but okay. Well, there's oh, hold on, you. Dan, I think you, I think you bounced at you, you, you went out, you came out. I can't hear you. I'm gonna try calling you again, bro. Okay. Okay. I think, it worked that time. Yeah, yeah. I, I am. I don't know. 
the uh, Comcast out here in Tacoma, Washington um, has been really, really weird. But uh, well, Comcast everywhere sucks, so I understand. Oh well, yeah, they d- they'll tell you like like five minutes before you're about to do something that they're gonna do a routine like check for. Hey, the next uh, the next two weeks, your internet is probably gonna um, <laughs> go up and down, but we're gonna send you the bill anyway. I'm yeah, like, you don't need it, so don't worry about it. Yeah, you're still gonna you're still gonna pay for this, but you but you're only gonna get like maybe a quarter of the usage usage this month because it's just not gonna work. <laughs> so yeah, it sounds like them. All right, we left off. You were talking about um, doing an interview with uh, synth wave ghost synth guy. Wave Yes. Okay. So, so this guy, um, I don't know how wh- where we dropped off, but this guy, you know, he does his synthwave music, and uh, he does these tours usually with metal bands. It's like his last tour was like with the Black Dahlia Murder, I think. Oh, okay. Um, and like you know, like it's it's they're big. Oh, the one before was with Mayhem in in Europe. You know what I mean? Like so, these are big metal tours. But he plays dance music, and uh, it's like I said, it's called Ghost G O S T, no H, and. Uh, he, his he plays this character Balbereth. I don't even know if it's a character because I don't know what exactly he does. But uh, but so it's just this weird shit that apparently Europeans love, which is not a big surprise. Um, but uh, and I, like I said, I don't particularly like it. But at the same time, like, do your thing, whatever. That's what's you, that's what you want to put out there. I'm not going to shit on you. Like, this is the stuff that you want to do and you want to put out. Like, so like, like the guy who put out the baby metal post, like you put a lot of time into that. You want to promote that stuff. That's the stuff you want to do. I'm not going to shit on it. Right. Exactly. But But so for this guy, what makes this guy interesting to me and why I wanted to talk to him is this guy actually, uh, put out my bands, my only band I was ever in. He put out uh, our demo tape back. Interesting. Yeah, and he didn't know this until I got him on the phone earlier. I said, uh, you know, did you, did you used to have a tape label called Never Give In Records? And he's like, yeah, I did. And I said, well, you know, we, we know each other through there. Uh, you, I think I was the only band. I was in the only band that he ever put out. I think it was just like a one tape thing <laughs> that he put out. And it, was, and it was my band's demo. And we never met each other. You know, it was just a through the internet thing. And so, you know, fuck it. It's... Everybody's just putting their shit out there is my point. Like everybody's just putting their stuff out and doing the things that they want to do and trying to get people to hear it. So uh, it doesn't matter if I like it or not. So, yeah. But just know that like you, like being aware of your, of your surroundings is also important too. So don't have big expectations. If you're a hardcore band and you decide to post it in your uh, band in like a popular, like, music thread for like pop dance music edm you're more than likely like you're gonna get the attention you don't want um you same with same with this like or people are just not going to pay attention to it at all like so Mm -hmm. you just gotta you just gotta be aware of where your audience is same with just same with podcasting and same with like with radio you gotta understand who's like actually listening to what you're doing it's fine to put to it's fine to take shoot your shot and uh take risks but if all you're doing is blindly posting like in random and random threads all over and just hoping somebody's going to uh to like it it's probably in my opinion it's probably gonna fail you mean it's okay to do that a little bit but also have some intention meet meet the people who actually like what you're you know like your brand, like what you're doing and like make those connections. Don't just like be like a, a mindless PR robot, like posting random shit all over the place. Oh, I agree. I agree with you on that. So from there, uh, tell, I guess, tell us a little bit about yourself from people who don't know you from, cause we have a, a cause we're based out of the West coast. Some people might not, uh, know you from your your part of uh your part of the world your part of the country give us a little bit of just give us the long short of your story of you know how you began doing getting it out and just uh getting into the music and hardcore and independent music and all the stuff that you do okay sure so so 
the the very beginning, and I will. I, I don't like listening to people do this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it as painless as possible. But the the very beginning is like I had this neighbor who was, uh, and actually this this can kind of. I was talking to um, shit. Who was the other day? Joel Grind. All right, I was talking to Joel Grind from Toxic Holocaust and you know all, all those bands the other day about we we had a similar similar neighbor. Not the same neighbor, but a similar neighbor who was into skateboarding and into like punk rock and metal. And that's he was a couple years older than me. He was my friend's older brother. And uh, I would just see shirts he was wearing. He listened to bad music, but listened to good music. It's how I heard about Circle Jerks. All you know, just was uh, exposed to skateboarding in general, which got me buying things that were involved in there. So I bought a pair of uh, Simon Woodstock Van skate shoes in the 90s, summer before 7th grade, and with that came a CD, a Vans Warp Tour Volume 2, and that had like Pennywise, H2O, uh, I forget what else, uh, Bad Religion, Down by Law, you know, the, those those types of bands. And so that was pretty early, and from there I was just kind of hooked into music, right? So I got obsessed with music, and as long as it was uh, hard, heavy, fast, whatever, I didn't care. So if it was fucking, if it was Biohazard, if it was... Uh, uh, Machine Head, I don't know, uh, Pennywise, like I said, Rancid, whatever. It was it was all cool to me. And it was like that for many years until eventually I, I, I would just go to local shows and found uh, hardcore. Uh, accidentally. I couldn't tell you what my first hardcore show was. It was probably Strength for a Reason being in Pennsylvania. It might have been uh, the first one that I really remember loving was like Striking Distance and Des- Desperate Measures and Worn Thin and My Luck, which were all like uh, bands on the the – local record label here, Youngblood Records. And so I got real into it, and I got, like, obsessed for years. I mean, like, 10 years. And 10 years later, um, I'm living down in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, still just going to hardcore shows entirely too much. That's that's all I cared about. And uh, you looked around my walls, it was just hardcore everywhere. It was, you know, it it was ridiculous. I don't know know how obsessed you you have been at any one point, but it can get kind of ridiculous. I feel like for me, it's it's always been like kind of a kind of steady just because of where I've uh, lived and grown up. Like, I think my biggest was like my early to mid 20s when I actually like I think when I started uh, being on this show and um, when I then when I started like doing like an actual like hardcore band for like for like a short moment in time, like that was probably the most but besides that w- besides that chunk of time i feel like it's been like healthy no no like i mean from the outside looking in i mean anything like a little over like a just a just a little bit over over the top can seem like an obsession people probably who've dropped out think i'm obsessed but i'm just like i've just always liked what i like yeah no and i i think that's that sounds like you did it the right way see i was just way i was just really into it man it was like all all i was worried about was the show on the weekend and there was a show every weekend because i lived in york pennsylvania which is really close to baltimore it's like 45 minutes north of baltimore and about 20 minutes south of harrisburg pennsylvania which at the time we had this venue the championship which everybody would come play like that 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 venue had like you you'd get random shows like it wouldn't make sense that uh, let's see, was 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 a random one. Like 100 Demons and Cold World's record release show would be like at this weird strip mall venue in an area where none of the bands are from, you know. Like, but that was just locally what we had going on at the time, and it was really it was really convenient. So it was like that. So every show for me was also a chance to hang out with my friends and drink and pretty much party. Although there wasn't really partying, you know, you just drink at the show or whatever. And and hang out and mosh and sing along and have a good time. So I did that f- for a while, and then, like I said, eventually moved to Baltimore and uh, started a band because I had a lot of friends who were all my friends were in were in bands, all of them. It, but I I never I never did shit. I would start I would I would write a little bit for Stereo Killer. I would write record reviews, um, Pulse News and stuff like that. But but I never played in a, va- a band, and I always kind of, but I always had this reputation as like the funny guy in school. I was voted the class clown, you know, like, a, like I, I had a real 
I, 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 very different from now, which I know sounds strange to say, being that I do a podcast. But uh, like now, I'm, uh, as I've gotten older, I've become really like introverted. But when I was younger, I was really outgoing, and uh, so it was. It seemed like a natural thing to sing for a band. So we did that whole thing, and that was that was me and my friends Tony, Brian, Tim, and Nick, and uh, those guys were like some some pretty decent sized band. Brian's I think still playing. Brian's still playing in Iron Price, who just put out a record. Um, Tony, the last band I know he was in was Integrity, and uh, he did Stout, Trapped Under Ice, um, whatever you know. So like it was it was a lot of people from a lot of bands. So we had that going for us, which enabled us to you know, quickly get on A389 Records, put out a 7-inch through there, who my buddy Dom Dom runs, ran. So, like, so it was easy exposure, and it was something that I always talk about with hardcore is it's a lot of uh, who you know, and that's, like, the most important thing is just who you know. So I did that, and, and then eventually I had, a, I had my daughter, and then none of that shit mattered anymore. Like, it just... Like I just didn't care. Like it didn't. I I wouldn't say I didn't care at all, but it didn't care. I didn't care nearly as much, and uh, I kind of just dedicated my life to what I had to do, which I know sounds. I'm trying to be vague intentionally, but like what the things that I had to do to be able to take care of my daughter, I did, and that that involved not being as active in hardcore anymore. And I was oh, totally okay with that because it was just like a thing I felt like I, I was cool with moving past. Um, so part of that meant I moved back to Pennsylvania, back to York, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And uh, so while I was kind of in my own little seclusion, you know, my only interaction with the hardcore scene was kind of uh, through, through social media, you know, and Spotify, finding new bands and, I listened to a lot of podcasts though, and I thought, well, there's not a ton. There's not. A, I mean, there's there's becoming more, but there wasn't two years ago a ton. You know, there was there was a few, but a uh, hardcore dedicated podcast. And when I started getting it out, it wasn't even supposed to be that. It was supposed to be something entirely different, and uh, it kind of just became what it is now. And I'm not. It's not a hardcore dedicated show, but it's just it was my way of uh, still being part of the music scene that I love and, you know, kind of obsessed over for many years. This is just something that I get to still be involved with, but through a different capacity. So is that why the, was the, uh, was the intro that you got do with like the rap song? Is that, was that kind of, um, an idea for you having a more general podcast or like when you did the hardcore pot, when you started being more hardcore, where was that? Just, was that a part of it? Like, I guess, I guess I'm not asking it correctly. What I'm, no, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. Okay. So yes, that, that, that rap intro, which I mean, I love when people listen to the podcast and they think that I'm seriously like trying to rap at them. Like, I, I think that's, that's to me, that's why it stays because people think that, that it's like me actually attempting to rap. Um, but the that is originally built off of the jokes that were all worked into the first. If you listen to like the first 30, 40 episodes, everything that's referenced in that rap song is something from the podcast. So it doesn't. The, the, it's totally out of context now. But fuck it, it's 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 what I got. So that's that's what it is. You know. I just I my one of my favorite parts is when he gets into like the uh, the the T Pain vocals. And it's just oh, the auto tune, yeah. the auto tune, and it just it just reminds me of. Do you remember when like they had the they had a T Pain app like and it it was actually super popular <laughs> for a while, and I I don't think it is anymore. But then it like after it like launched initially, people would actually there were competitions for on the T Pain app. There was a game where you would like literally. Like you would post your you would post your songs and you would compete with other people on a network of t of just bad T Pain covers. I had I had no idea that that was a thing. And the fun the the, the I I would have done it. I would have absolutely done that though. But the, the funny thing about like that that auto tune part is, um, I actually ha I had to ask my friend like, I sent him what I was doing. Like he's an actual he's an actual producer who puts out you know actual good albums. And I was like, hey, I need you to tell me. Like, he gave me the right key to put it in. Although, we all know, if anybody's heard it, it sounds terrible. And again, intentionally so. 
but you know, it was there was actually some real professional insight on on that one, how to make it sound the right supposed key. But yeah, it's a that's a that's a part that I always talk about. I need to get rid of. But at the same time, I don't know. It's it's kind of like my own little trolling myself on my own podcast. So it's it's there for now. So like the main idea of like when I call when I like hit you up about this uh, doing this episode is just talking with people who grew up in uh, you know just like different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and seeing just what their like ideas of a, like an opposite part of the country, yeah, specifically yeah. like with with like. You know, like East Coast, West Coast hardcore scene. So growing up, everything I knew about it didn't even matter. If uh, I always thought East Coast, New York hardcore, completely. Just like growing up in Seattle, just like I didn't think about, I didn't think about other parts of that coast, any any other states. It was always like, what do you what do you think about um, about uh, you know East Coast hardcore? I was like, I like Madball. Like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, and, and I know, like, as far as like East Coast people might only know, like, like a specifically Seattle, it would it's probably either Trial or Champion. That's like probably it. If if people on the East Coast know anything about the Northwest, yeah, at I would, all. I would, I would say from my from from my age, I would say Champion. Yeah, like anything New York hardcore, I like. With growing up, like it took me till like I think m- like later on to know other, you know, like obviously TUI, Bal- Baltimore, like, and then all of the like metal influenced Florida bands. But like, do do you guys do as far as Florida? Do you do people on the rest of the East Coast claim Florida in ge- in general? No, I think it, uh, when, when people say East Coast, it's it's really a strange term. Well, it's, I mean, it's not a strange term, but what I, when I say East Coast, what I mean is the Northeast. Like, you don't even consider – I mean, I know Washington, D.C. is East Coast. I mean, technically, whatever. I guess it's not really on the coast, but, you know, like, it, that, to me, that's not it. That's – like, once you go past Baltimore, you're in the South. So, like, East Coast – East Coast, yeah, you, you, it's kind of – it's kind of Baltimore North, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't, it, I know geographically it doesn't make any sense, but that's, that's kind of the way it is. You know, everything, you know, it, the, I don't know. Are you familiar with the Mason Dixon line? Uh, I've, I've heard of it and I can't, I can't remember if I, if I even, I remember learning about it in school and that's all I remember. <laughs> it's the border. It's basically the border of Pennsylvania and Maryland, which okay. was like, oh, the, okay, yeah. like the separation between North and South, you know, in civil war. Yeah. Uh, but but most people would tell you that Maryland uh, wasn't the South, but you know, but people from the North argue that it is because it's more fun to tell them that they're the South, you know. So, um, but yeah, so so it's kind of there's always kind of this division between what's actually it's just like a North South thing. And to me, when when you say East Coast, I don't think even though uh, you know North Carolina and Georgia and Florida have rightful. Uh, uh, claim to that geographically, they're not East Coast, you know, they're South. That's <laughs> it's weird, but that's the way it is. Because, like, with I, I would say probably anyone in the West Coast who lives in California probably doesn't claim Oregon or <laughs> or Washington. No, yeah, yeah. Like nobody in yeah, nobody in Cali like probably past the Bay Area like cares about anyone nor anything north of the Bay Area. Yeah, it's really stupid, but but it's that's just how it is, you know. Like I can't think of like like I do like like port like Portland, like living in the Northwest, Portland um is the only part of Oregon that really matters. Actually, the Oregon coast is absolutely beautiful. It's just there's nothing out there and you better like bring like a gas can because you because <laughs> there's miles and miles before like between towns out there but uh portland actually has a pretty cool like um hardcore and metal scene um seattle i've always like besides maybe like the last two years like people probably don't even understand like seattle's been like doing shit for so long like like p- you guys might People might not know Seattle, but you guys, but y'all know Rainfest. We right. we literally 
like made something out of nothing. Yeah, but then I think it's it's like and I totally agree and acknowledge that. But I think when you have um, you have so many options for big festivals here that you just kind of go, oh, there's another one over there. Like, agree. Like, yeah, this yeah, is like, hardcore. So we, we this have... is hardcore. Obviously, just as far as the bands, it it does trump Rainfest because it is easier to get all those bands to your guys' venues because they're yeah. already there. So it's it's a it's a plane ride across the country versus a two to three hour car ride. Right, right. So yeah, I totally get it. I'm, and I've never been to I've never been to a uh, this is hardcore. So like Rainfest was like a a thing that I got to grow up going to for oh I think I I went every year for the entire time that it existed and it was like that was like for for a small area in the a, our corner of the U.S. it was it was it was awesome like being able to like actually get bands from your area to to come and like play for us well i think that's i think right there is one of the big differences between here and there um we're spoiled and we know we're spoiled too i mean we we take it for granted but we're totally spoiled you cannot you i i haven't gone to this is hardcore in maybe two years um before that i hadn't gone in maybe five years you know like I, I, like it was just because I don't have to, and I know that sound. I know how that sounds, right? I know how that sounds. But uh, the options you, you you're going to get the option pretty much to see every band on that bill at some point through the year. And I I can honestly say I've never seen some of my favorite bands ever. I have never seen Gorilla Biscuits. I have never got to. I I still haven't even seen Madball because they really yeah wow. they. Uh, they have it, I this is an off air discussion, but there's there's some issues with other parts of the Pacific Northwest, and there's reasons why Madball doesn't doesn't come out. Um, yeah, to to our area. So the closest they're coming is eleven uh, eleven hours away in Calgary, and I'm consi- <laughs> and I'm considering I'm considering getting my enhanced driver's license to do it. Whether that's going to happen, I don't know. I haven't been to Canada in, in a very long time, so I'm like, I'm thinking about it for for Madball, but we'll we'll see how that. I might just end up just waiting to like actually save the money to go to a This Is Hardcore, so yes. I can see all because <laughs> literally I can cross all those bands off the list in one weekend, like all the bands that I grew up listening to, like Youth of Today. I've never seen, never seen like like all like. The important bands I have not seen because of where they are, where they lie geographically. Yeah, and and like I I know like that's real for other people, and th- like for me, it's like yeah, I've seen them all several times, and not and I'm not that old, you know, I'm 35, but so I've only seen well, I've seen Madball, they they never really stopped, but you know, Youth of Today, Gorilla Biscuits, I've seen the reunions, um, and I I know how it sounds again, but without really having to try. They're just they come by, you know, um, and and I get it. and the, the the best example I ever had of this was, um, 2012 I'm gonna say East Coast Tsunami Fest. It was the second years in Reading, which is really nearby to where I live now, and uh, it was Blood for Blood was headlining before that guy started touching kids and uh, oh, the yes. yeah yeah. And uh, who else was on it? Uh, I forget who. The, I forget the other headliners. It was like leftover crack was one night or something. But whatever. It was like you know. It was like blood for blood, Marauder, uh, no redeeming social value, Murphy's Law, Mucky Pup. Like it was. It was a really. A shelter was on it. It was a really big lineup. And uh, um, I, I was checking in my hotel because I had come up from Baltimore and I saw this guy checking in at the same time. And then when we were driving over to the show later, I saw him walking over. And then when we were sitting around just drinking, eating, I saw him just sitting by himself. So I walked over to him, and I was like, "Hey, I saw you. Uh, I saw you at the hotel. I saw you walking over here. I see you're by yourself. We're all staying at the same place. Why don't you just hang out with us for the rest of the weekend?" And he right away was, and I'm gonna do a bad accent here, was like, "Oi, all right, mate." And I was like, "What the fuck? Where are you from?" 
And he's like, I, I came here from New Zealand. Like, <laughs> what? You came here all the way from fucking New Zealand? Like, to see this show? And he's like, yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Like, literally, travel the, like, the, pretty much the whole world to come to a show that I last minute decided to go to. And, you know, and I remember Marauder canceled, like, the sec on the second day. And he was bummed. And I remember him, like, coming over to before, like, before the show started. And, uh, well, the show started, and we were just, like, hanging out at the hotel, like, drinking beers. And he was real eager to get over there. And I'm like, damn, I guess this, this is the difference. Like, we are so spoiled rotten. And this guy, you know, literally traveled across the world to do this, and we could give a shit. And, you know, he's, yeah, it's just nuts. I think it's also the connection and getting people um, to like care about because like I feel like like it's also how it's presented. So I think at Rainfest, if it was like Youth of Today Girl Biscuits at Rainfest, it would do really well. I think also they would do all right in a touring capacity. But like I helped put together um, the latest like Marauder Leeway tour. Yeah, and yeah. it was done kind of. It was done pretty hastily and like it's a we have a weird dynamic out here for for heavy music we we usually it's like we like in seattle right now it's a lot of people liking punk and grindy stuff or or just like super like like black metal and we have a huge we have a pretty big metal fest out here now too um but like that hybrid that new york hardcore like with with in like heavy metal like in it with like marauder it it does not it you it it was hard to find people to come out because it yeah, was yeah. because of just like like that connection and the bands not coming out like i think the last time marauder tried to come out but prior to that was like eight years ago so it's also like we do have the internet but if bands aren't coming out often enough like to a certain area people don't get into those style of bands yeah yeah and it it, it becomes a uh, I, I had a chad on getting it out recently from uh, red death and we he's originally from california and we were talking about um how when a band keeps coming to your area it gets you you know more excited about that band, even though even even though it can have like an adverse effect if you locally play your scene too much, then people just don't give a shit because you play every fucking show. So what's the you know re relax, give it a break. But if if you're continually showing interest in a scene afar from yours and just like dropping in, and people get that familiarity and and you know and it becomes and you make a connection that's more than just the music. Uh, then it speaks volumes. Like he was, he his his example was trapped in the rice coming out to California, and my and my on the opposite side was that was like, well, that's funny because at the time I was living in Baltimore, you felt like they never played Baltimore, but they were always out in California, and you know, and for him that was like a that was cool, that was that was what he wanted, and that was a cool connection that he got to make. And it's also weird just because like New York hardcore still doesn't it doesn't matter where you're, it has a, an intense influence like all over the world and some people don't even realize it like with uh seattle if you look at some some of the bigger like not big but like the ba bands in the local area that are bigger in hardcore they're a hundred percent new york influenced i had a couple episodes ago i had um my friend caleb who's in a band called by all means it's complete yeah. outburst killing time worship like a hundred a hundred percent like and they they know it and everybody loves it but if those if those two bands actually played it you know like or bands of that ilk play the show i don't know how it, how it'd go in a non-fest capacity here in the northwest but people who like take take influence from those bands or take cues seem to do very well we also had a they're still around, and I talked about it in an episode a couple weeks ago as well. Uh, the band Ill Intent. They came, they came, uh, they used to come on the East Coast a couple times too. They were on uh, 6131 Records yeah, for, a yeah. for a little while, as well as a few of our other 
bands out here with uh, Wreck and uh, Power. So, um, but Ill Intent was like a hundred percent like New York hardcore worship through and through. Like if you listen to the record that came out on six one three one, so it's so it's just it's just interesting. Um, also, Lower Species um, are like a straight up like like another like outburst uh, mixed with breakdown. Um, so like there is a love for it, but it's interesting like where they love the bands doing it now, but they're not making the connection to what uh what cues these bands are taking um taking from do you think it's like a a conscious thing do you think people are um just against it because it's because it's from new york that's in that i don't i see i don't know like because i feel like in my years being here it's like or maybe it's just just like we decided we just decided that we just don't care because the bands those bands n- have never really tried to make it out here so we're just going to make our own that's yeah that's a, fair too i think that's, that's a possible valid. that's a possibility so like so people so like the newer kids completely just miss out on some of those bands or don't or just like forget about them because like all right well i'm not going to see you see this band unless i unless i fork over like you know, eight hundred dollars to come out to come over to you know this hardcore or whatever. Yeah, I get it. I I I get it. Build your own rather. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's it's but it's I I like I wonder with these things, stuff like this is this 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 these type of uh, mentalities and I don't want to say elitis elitisms, but because they're not that exactly. But like I feel like this stuff. And maybe it's just because it's the only genre I'm this uh, in tune with and familiar with. But I feel like it doesn't exist with other genres of music. Like, I don't feel like you have this type of thing, this, uh, like, uh, local prejudice for in, like, heavy metal. You know, like, I don't think somebody from North Carolina gives a shit if the band coming is from, you know, Wyoming, uh, as far as if, if it's a heavy metal show. I don't, I don't think it matters. And I don't think it would matter if, if it was a New York metal band playing in, in your area. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it's just this is this is a very specifically uh, a hardcore thing. I think it is, too, just because, like, I don't know, metal, like, it's all, it's always, like, even even the more, like, lesser knowns, it's it's easier to, fl- to, to get your name out with just the genre in general just because there's – there are some different ethics involved yeah. with with metal. There's still a lot of DIY ethics with metal, but there's still like there's it's it's uh it's more it's more established because of metal has been able to uh transcend to different stages that hardcore hasn't and when hardcore does transcend, it goes into a different it it transcends almost it doesn't just transcend it transcends musically as well into something different like you have turnstile who's they're definitely a hardcore band and they've transcended as well as like code orange and other bands like that but they have transcended musically as well in a way yeah. that's that is different from um their original um sound and product so cuz i think you can still like as a metal band you can transcend without completely changing usually sometimes it's transcending with like with uh just like having a better recording right 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 but still being like i don't know brutal as fuck or whatever i'm not i'm not i like metal but i i'm i'm not gonna say that i'm the biggest metal uh, aficionado in the world i've always like i've stick stuck in my lane and it's always been it's always been hardcore for me well, for you and like you said earlier that like you like the Mashi stuff. Are are you, what is are, what is the uh, identity of like the the Northwest scene? Like, cause cause over here, East Coast, what I what I consider East Coast, typically, um, East Coast, you're gonna think in in, in in my view, is that it's all there's always like a a street culture 
part of it. There's always, you know, it's it's there's always a toughness. Even even the nicest bands, you know, even the poppiest uh, hardcore bands like H2O, there's still like a, a street thing happening there. Um, what what is like a, a defining thing of like a, a Northwest hardcore? Like what would an on a typical Northwest hardcore kid uh, like look like, listen to, and just well, like, like a, their like overall a, identity? Like a, like a stereotype of, a of stereot- a Northwest hardcore kid. A stereot- that would be that would be accurate. I would say my I would say the typical Northwest hardcore person would be like my my friend. I would say anybody who still takes cues from from late nineties uh, to mid two thousands, um, like hard like hardcore from from Seattle specifically. Anything like w- I like I would say that Dead Air was a typical Northwest hardcore show for a very long time. We didn't play too much heavy. We played a lot of like the heaviest we would go would be trial. Um yeah. we we took a lot of cues from like um React Records bands. Um right, right. because of the bands that were coming out of here, like um Champion or Up North, we had like Blue Monday or Go It Alone. Um, yeah. bands, bands like that, we would take cues from a lot of other bands that were of that similar style from other parts of the world. Like anything like on the react records roster was like, was like huge. And I would, I would say that's like a typical Northwest hardcore person. The original, um, the host prior to me, cause there's been a uh, multiple hosts on dead air. Um, oh, yeah. if you didn't know the history, we were a radio yeah. show. Um, since 2004, um, the original hosts started, um, started in 2004 and then, uh, they got hired at a, um, at the biggest rock radio, uh, station in Seattle and they currently host a metal show there. And then they, um, gave the show to somebody else who I would say is like, at that point he was the normal, typical Northwest hardcore person. Like they like they like stuff they like stuff fast they like um they like a traditional um punk style but stuff with a little bit more uh i would say like kind of kind of production and musicianship like stuff that was that started like happening a lot in late 90s to late uh, 90s 2000. early uh early to mid 2000s that's like that's like the range right there. Cause like, right. Like, and, and that's, and sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's ex- exactly what I would expect to hear. Like the, you know, like, and all right. So here's my stereotype of uh Northwest hardcore kid or, you know, it's like a, a guy who wears clothes that fit. Um, clothes that- <laughs> he, he, he has a journal maybe uh, probably a good job. Um, and it's just, just a little more insightful than the than the idiots we have over here myself included like that 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 is real and like that is really the idea of like i don't know you guys just don't seem you seem more well behaved and uh i don't know you seem like better people it's it's hard it, it's hard to say like i feel like my description was so weird since i you know it's hard like it's probably just as hard for you sometimes to think of like what somebody typically like acts like and looks like in in your hardcore scene today as well as is mine because i've just like i've lived in the pacific northwest my entire life i have lived in the same county south of seattle since i was born i literally am have always been within like 15 to 20 minutes from the hospital i was born in wow yeah well see and and that that might be part of it too is that the big difference it might not just i mean the big difference obviously is not it's not going to be uh it's not really the hardcore scene it's just geographically the, the, the how people are i mean i think the, the stereotype of us on the east coast being uh assholes is true uh, you know it's i know like i know how much of a how short my fuse is and how i talk to people like i, I know i can be like super rude and uh it, but it's like so natural that it's that it's embarrassing, honestly, but, but I don't think other places have that. And I, and I think that, you know, that translates over to the hardcore scene too. I think you see it there. It's pretty obvious. 
You know, I think I found the perfect stereotype. The the typical Seattle hardcore person is somebody who either grows up or moves out of Seattle. That is the that is the, <laughs> that is the stereotype because any of the people that I even think that I even like like even just mentioned were are people that don't even participate in hardcore anymore. So like, like I they, said they're smarter. They usually like a lot of them go on to do like a lot of the people who have been highly involved like start ha- are like started their own business. They're in um they're in politics. They're helping their communities. They're they've used their they have transcended their DIY ethics into something else. They've stopped going to as many shows. And they're they're just uh, I guess you're right. They're better people. <laughs> yeah, like, look, at the general, look at the general progression of a of a East Coast uh, like hardcore lifer, dude. You just end up in a in a biker gang. That's really the end of it. Is it really? Is, is that, that really? <laughs> eventually, you know, I, I'm staying out of it. But you know, most of most of your uh, ex friends have gone to gone on to biker gangs. Oh, several. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very normal thing. And like, whatever. It's it's totally fucking do your thing. Whatever you know, kid. Uh, I don't know, but uh, you know, yeah, that's definitely a definitely a thing. Um, a typical, like I would say, a, like a hype hardcore person who like gets into hardcore and is like a hardcore fanboy and like blips out, like yeah. somebody who only only is in hardcore for like a couple years in Seattle. They usually, I I work in security. They usually end up at my bar. They usually just yeah. like they're you like I have somebody who's not going to name them, but they don't. They just don't give a shit because they know they they know a hundred percent that um. They were Mr. Straight Edge judgy motherfucker and now they they broke edge doing coke and now they're like just now now they're just like they just are like a the drunk bartender that fucking the fucking uh just uh he he's like a complete 180 of what he of what he was like he used to be like clean cut straight edge shirt um just like no ta- like no tattoos and now he's just like he lo- the dude looks like he has not taken a shower since since that point. That's 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 funny because that just sounds like the way we start. <laughs> we <laughs> just stop. <laughs> we just stop taking showers. <laughs> no, no, the, the, the cleanliness might be might be in question, but but and, and it's something that that I'm actually pretty critical of. Uh, of a lot of my old friends and people that I used to hang out with and don't anymore for that particular reason is because they've been, uh, you know, partying so fucking hard for so long, loving booze and cocaine. Um, don't get me wrong. I still like beer. I never, never once tried cocaine to be honest, but, um, but like, you know, you around, or around that world of like Coke and drinking and hardcore shows and the amount of people that are still doing that 15 years later well, it's less because a lot of them have died, but it's and I, I don't even say that jokingly. I say that unfortunately, but you know, there's so many that still stick with that and then don't grow up at all, and it's it's weird. It's even it's almost it's almost seems more maybe it's because of people I know more sad to see the people that don't change at all than to see uh, like what you're saying, like people that who who have changed progressively gotten worse over the years instead of just staying a piece of shit for. 15 years so there's there there's a there's a thing it's it's only i call i call because i work at a place called the comet tavern i call it comet core because there's people who no longer go to shows but they all somehow end up in my fucking bar they end up they end up all like there'll be nights where people they don't they don't even intentionally mean to be there but they show they show up and it's uh like and they've they haven't been to a show in years and they're just like, they just spend the rest of their lives like bar crawling. They're, they're like, Oh yeah, I'm over hard. I'm over hardcore. It's like, Oh yeah. Cause that's so, you know, like why it's like, Oh yeah, it's a, it's a big waste of money. And I'm like, and it's a big waste of time. So she's like, and I'm my, my thought is, so this, this, what you're doing right now, <laughs> you're probably, you're probably just, you probably have an open tab right now and you're just gonna, just keep getting drinks and just walk around until someone fucking finally, probably me, kicks you out of a bar. <laughs> is this is a better use of your time? That's, that's what they think. Man. That's that's, that's think. so 
alien and weird to me. Like, yeah, I, 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 I feel the same way. And, um, like, I, I don't know. It's the, the watching friends, um, who, I don't know. And this, this isn't hardcore specific at all, but watching friends who you used to have, you know, we had a lot of good times with and like, uh, really enjoyed their company for a long time become just uh kind of unbearable and miserable and uh you know it caught in stupid cycles it's it's depressing not in like a not in like a think about it often and it bothers me but just like when you when you, when you think about it like, damn man I, I i wish you'd just you know settled out become a boring adult yeah like, man like just... i'm like i don't mind i get it that for some for me i love doing this this is so i work I work a lot. I'm I'm going to I'm going to go work after after this. I do yeah. like I I try to I work probably over like around 60 hours a week and I wow. and I and I do it for my family. I do but like I like to unwind with a fucking hardcore show. To be honest, like that's what I do like when I don't like what I what I like to do is I like to like some a lot of people on their time off, they'll spend a lot of time at the fucking bar, or, or spend like or like the people I work with in the industry know, which I I love. They will spend a lot of their time after um, work at the same bar they just worked at drinking. Yeah. And I'm like, me, I want to go home, hang out with my family, go and um, take my kid out somewhere fun, go on adventures with them, and then for my own own fucking time where I want to be by myself. I do I do this or I go out to a, a show and it's and that's a one thing like one thing like universally I think with established scenes if you've been there for a while you don't have to like uh, there used to be a time when you're, you're like younger where you used to all get in a fucking car and drive to venue X and and uh it would be like a big outing and you'd go out and eat after or go somewhere after me I like I like I like how it is now. I know I've known all the people for years. I go show up the show, say hi, go ha- like go talk to the band, watch the band, go to Del Taco, go home, pass out. <laughs> well, see, and and I I hear you there because that uh, I don't go to much anymore. You know, I do I do locally when it's here. But like, all right, so say this this past weekend, I mentioned before, uh, or I mentioned earlier that. One of my bandmates is in one of my ex bandmates is in a band now called Iron Price. They were playing. I'm not kidding. Five minutes down the road from my house, you know, and we don't even live in the same state anymore. Um, and I'm friends with everybody in that band. I definitely um, probably would have gone to say hi at least. But at the same time, it was my stepdaughter's 13th birthday. Oh I have yeah, my, no my, fuck that. I have Sorry, my daughter. <laughs> like yeah, like uh, this is like. I only have my daughter on the weekends, so I do have her every weekend. Um, like my daughter, um, I'm with my wife. Like I'm not, I'm not leaving. To, to, you know, I, to, that's not more important than this. They understand though. They they know. They know. if they, well, if, if, they, they don't if they know, don't know, if they don't know, <laughs> and they're your friends, you need to tell them to look in the fucking mirror. Yeah, no. If they, that's what I would say. If they don't, that's t- too bad. Like, I'm, I'm like, not... <laughs> like if they live five minutes away, go over there and give them a fucking slap in the face. <laughs> no, no, yeah. It's so good, but but my point is just that, like, it's it's I I don't know. There's just so much. There's so much other stuff. There's so much other more important stuff. And I don't mean, uh, yeah, it is more important. But um, like, I can still love. Uh, hardcore and the hardcore scene without being as immersed in it as I used to be, and uh, I I don't I don't take any I don't have any uh, guilt about that where I think some people want you to. But like yeah, I think, and, and you you made me think. Uh, uh, I think a typical usually like a hardcore person here who's usually like goes and uh, tries to do something productive like like real like once they once they leave hardcore. They the ethics never really die, and they do, and they take that into whatever business practice or whatever they do next. A lot of them end up usually in the northwest coming back. Um, a ram, yeah. a ram from Champion and uh, Betrayed. Uh, he started a new band, right? Yeah, called Change. Same with yeah. uh, same with Chris Williams, who who was in the band as well. 
Um, they're currently in Europe right now. So, nice. so sometimes you just need a fucking break. Like it, and I completely, and I completely understand that. Like that's, that's dope. I think, I think it's always going to be in, and it's still ingrained in your life too. Cause you're doing this show. You're talking to your right, friends right. about hardcore. So I think in some ways it just never, it never leaves you. And sometimes you, and it's in, when you've done it for so long, you can always come back. You always like go back to a show and have a fucking good time when, you know, you don't have to do something that's important. I think it's, it'll be, it's always going to be in some way a part of our lives. Right. And I, and I don't take it for granted and I know it's there, you know, like, and that's like, I hope people don't think, well, I don't care if they think, but like, I don't think I should just be able to walk in and have everybody be like, Hey, good to see you again. But you know, but I also think that's exactly how it should go. But like to, to go back to what you're saying about like taking the, the ethics learned from like just being part of it. Um, just uh, another example that I just want to name drop because I appreciate what he does. Um, I, I don't know if you're are you familiar. Well, we'll, t- we'll say two guys, two guys from uh, two guys that run uh, Think Fast Records. Are you familiar with them at all, Ryan and Larry? No, I'm I'm not at all. Okay, well, well, um, I don't know Ryan at all, but I know Ryan runs this uh, Instagram page. To, it's called WrestleBotch. Um, where it's it's just like wrestling clips or whatever wrestling bloopers but it's huge okay i don't i'm not a wrestling guy at all but it's huge and it's but it, you know this is the singer outbreak like and, he, and it's it's like when i say it's huge it's like it's it's a, it's a massive thing and it's like and he does these it's all diy larry who also runs uh think fast records with him um i had him on getting it out for quite a while back but uh he's you know he used to sing for uh uh esteem uh, where fear and weapons meet, you know, but he, he's also, he's a stand up comedian now and like does everything, you know, and it's just, you could see the work ethic that the total DIY, like I want to do this all myself um, because it's what I want to do. And I think it's a really cool thing to see um, people from this world, you know, use that elsewhere. Absolutely. And they're just like people just like one person who's my like absolute hero um, from here is, uh, and he'll laugh, uh, Greg Bennick from trial who just, who's continually doing like, who's continually just done stuff all over the world. Like that's like the goal that I want. If you don't know much about, uh, Greg from trial, I would just uh, check out 100 for Haiti. And, um, he has also in a band, uh, X bystander X as well currently. And he's just like, I've never met a more busy person who like who does things in and outside of hardcore and just like he's become the change he wanted to see in the world with helping people all over the world do saying um just doing his like his spoken word and all the stuff that he does uh, like as well as um as well as still actively do hardcore being someone I don't I don't want to say that he he is someone who's uh, vastly uh, older than myself, and it's like <laughs> just like I <laughs> I hate saying that because I don't want to I don't, I don't want to like downplay that and make it feel like because it's just like that's those are like when I see someone like that I that's like that's goals. Yeah, absolutely. So Mr. I get it. I... <laughs> um, Mr. Dan Crayley. I almost wanted to call you Crawley again. I keep every time I think of your, I just, I've, I've thought since I've found out about getting it out podcast, it's always been Crawley in my head. So I apologize. That's all right. it's, I, I don't apologize. think I say it often. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, I think Crawley, I think I'm just like, it's the, it's those fucking bar crawlers out there, man. <laughs> like one last thing I have to say is just like, I had to, uh, this is me getting it out right now. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting it out on, on dead air. With getting it like out, it. with getting out podcasts. So, uh, I last last night, um, post Super Bowl, um, I were I worked um, I work at a local bar, another not the Comet, but it's across the street from the Comet. It's a tiny little, it's a tiny little place called Mario's, um, New York style pizza. I had to let that, I had to get that out because most people from your your part of the world, if they ever come into, come into it, they're like, this isn't fucking New York pizza. This, this is shit. So yeah, of course. (laughs) 
Uh, so it was <laughs> it was like the smallest bar on the block, but like every other bar was was like completely fucking dead. But our bar was just nuts to butts. It was just like people. This is not a bar, a dancing bar, but people were getting up on the tables, going fucking, going fucking nuts. And um, so the bartender told me to kick someone out, and I was like, I was like, hey man, can I can I talk to you? And then he, um, he shows me his piece, and he's like, you know what this means? And I was like, I was like, yeah, but why? I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm like. No, I don't know. Why do you want? He's like, you're. It's over. I'm like, what's over? He's like, you. You're over. I'm like, could you explain to me why? He was like, you know, you know why. And I was like, no, I wouldn't be asking you. Like, <laughs> here's the thing. I completely understand that in doing security or door, like you're gonna get threats. But I would like to, if someone's going to kill, try to kill me, or end up threatening to shoot me i would i'd at least like to know why because i I think you deserve that i still don't know i still don't know why he (laughs) didn't never explain to me and he went over to another bar and explained to the other told the other person he's like that guy's over and they didn't explain didn't explain to me why like the guy was just the guy was just like a little whacked out in his brain on something but he i was just like i don't care if you if you are gonna make a threat, at least have a reason. It it doesn't even have to be a good reason because there really isn't a good reason to to be like that. But like, I don't want my last my last thought in my head before I die to be a question. <laughs> well, I mean, I think if you, I think I think in that situation, it's gonna be. I think I don't think there's a way out of it. <laughs> Man, can I? Is there a way I can force the que- the answer out of him before my last breath, man? As he as he pulls the trigger, I don't I don't know. I think that's his, maybe that's his calling card. <laughs> that that's not the way I want to go. I'm, I'm going to try to avoid that then, <laughs> because that's not that. I know I don't have a choice, but like that and dying on the toilet are two are two fucking ways I don't want to I don't want to go out. <laughs> I don't know. Dying on the toilet doesn't sound too bad, but Dude, it depends. I just like, I mean, I guess if I've been on the toilet for a long time, I'm just like, I, I'm just like, if that it's it's gone that deep, it's gone that long. Maybe I just want like, man, either this needs to stop or I need to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess in in that mindset, yeah, that's not. But, but I don't want neither of those ways sound great at all. No, yeah, I. I I I I want something better. I don't know what I want, but I want something better than both of those. Yeah, just like I don't like the last. I don't want to get ended by some some stupid from some stupid bar hopper like for no for no reason because I told him to just to cool to cool off and come back come back another day. Yeah, how dare you? How how no people get super offended. And be like, I am a very customer service based and nice guy at my job. So when people just think that I'm like, like a like get super offended, I'm just like, what did I say, man? <laughs> like if if you've seen pictures of me, I look like a fuck. I look like a bald ass Pillsbury doughboy. I am the least <laughs> threatening hardcore kid out there. When I mosh, I'm only endangering people because I'm so fucking clumsy. I like if I mosh, I fucking I and I backhand into someone. People get so mad, like. Dude, you're so violent. No, I literally, it's because I take one step and I can't stop moving. Like I'm trying to put on the brakes, but I'm like, I'm like running into everything. That's, uh, you got a reputation like that. That's your crowd killer. <laughs> I'm not. And that's the thing. Seattle crowd killing. They hate it. They hate it out here. Rightfully so. It's stupid. It's, it's, we usually FSU and all the people who are like, we, we, it's overwhelmingly uh, an anti thing that, like, if you try to come in a crew, you're gonna get, you're you're done. Like you, yeah. it's not gonna, it doesn't, it does not work out here. So, yeah, M- Mr. Dan Crayley, thank you so much for your time. This was pretty long. And uh, yeah, any last things you want to say before we get out here? Because I'm gonna take my kid to the pool. 
No, no. I mean, other, other than uh, if, if people want to find uh, Getting It Out podcast, they can they can look on uh, – what's what do, what do I call it now? What's Instagram? At getting underscore it underscore out underscore podcast and uh, there's there's all sorts of other stuff. There's a Facebook page, getting it out podcast, but you know the pretty general stuff. Uh, thank you for having me on to do this. I, I I seriously appreciate it. Dude, this is no, this is fun. I like I like talking to other uh, other podcast and radio people and just like shooting the shit. So this was it's, yeah, it's really cool. Maybe sometime I can uh, come and uh, hang out on getting it out. Just Absolutely, a, just a a little nudge nudge there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna go take my kid out to the the local swimming pool and then I'm gonna get out of here. All right, man. Enjoy. All right, talk to you later. Right. Yep, take it easy. All right, bye. I got the call Set you by myself a new man Sitting there alone with my thoughts I think about what I did wrong Two years now down the drain How could this happen to me? Make sure to give us a like on Instagram and Twitter at Dead Air NWCZ. Motherfucker. Don't you pull me into your ring, your lies, your dread world of this a thing. Don't want to read of hell, you're being bitching endlessly soaked in apathy. Hear about it all the time, no one can let on your right. Save us all from your nuisance, which I guess.
I'm going to make this short and sweet because I can't talk worse shit right now. And I'm going to get this fucking show done if it's the last thing I goddamn do. Thank you to Dan Crayley. Um, I might have even accidentally called him Crawley again. It's hard. I just think of him as Dan Crawley. And I'll try not to. Sorry, Dan. But thank you, Dan. It's also it's always awesome to uh, just talk to uh, other people who are contributors to hardcore music what, and content creators, not just bands. I love uh, people who make zines, run record labels, do photography, videography, and everything in between. Radio personalities, podcasters, YouTubers, people who are contribute in any way to this music. Um, I think it's important to talk and share ideas and it's cool to just get Dan's perception of what, you know, is going on in hardcore when we, sh- we are on two opposite sides of the country and got into hardcore at different times. And like I said, I, w- he, the website that he helped, um, create content was one of my gateways into punk music in general, which was which is amazing. It's crazy. Um, so after the interview, we uh, played a track from Dan's band, Pleasant Living, Pleasant Living, which was the first time I actually ever heard this band. And no pun intended, I was fucking pleasantly surprised. Like, I, it wasn't what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be good, but I, I was expecting... I don't know, wife beater mosh music. Like him and a wife beater telling people to fuck people up. And it'd be kind of like like some fat some fast parts, but a lot of like fast parts into fucking ass beater parts. I was not expecting a kind of a a New York punk oi melodic hardcore style band. And I I'm all about it. Uh, that seven inch alone that he put out that your band put out in, uh, I believe it's 2014 could be wrong, but it was definitely released on a three, eight, nine records. Um, the seven inch is better than pretty much the entire discography of things that I've ever put out. So big ups to you, uh, members of slum wards trapped under ice, stout and fighting chance. Uh, I really like it, and, you know, if you ever get a chance and have free time to do a band again, fucking do it, because it sounds real good. Um, after that, we played a song from Method. They are from uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and I think very little of the state of Iowa, because I just don't think about it at all. But uh, they have a, a record titled constant weight and uh we played soaked in agony oh soaked in apathy my fucking bad so soaked in apathy i really like the vocals on this too um it wasn't what i it wasn't what i was expecting and i love um i really like the uh kind of higher pitch to the vocals so i'm i'm all i'm all in on method we'll listen to more definitely but we're going to end this with some music from Big Takeover. Um, new music on Triple B Records, which is always doing it. I will report I will report to you when Triple B Records is not, quote unquote, doing it or doing things. You will know because I will be like, Triple B is officially not fucking doing things. But... This is my first real listen to Big Takeover as well. Um, their record, um, their EP title Madhouse is just some artwork of some fucking barbed wire. Can't tell if I if I am okay with it or I love it. I'm writing the line between this is pretty cool or damn, that's dope. Don't know yet. Five songs. I love the vocal delivery. Um when the no hits, um, I'm, I'm all in on that song title. Um, just be fucking ready for that fucking, fucking nuke could fucking end us all, man. Um, 
All I gotta say is uh, make it fucking short. Make it short, sweet, and uh, get it. Get on with it. Get over with it. Get it over with. So, uh, big takeover when the new kids. That's the last song. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week.